Hey folks, I'm joined today by Matt, and he is going to talk us through a little bit about uh, Dungeon Saga Origins in terms of the game mechanics and things like that. And first of all, Matt, why have we done it? Well, that's a good question. Um, so this is actually, uh, let's call this a, a lockdown game, a lockdown project. So uh, obviously we all spent a lot of time at home with our, our families and, um, and things like that. Um, and uh, we were working through, through the whole of that. Um, and, uh, you know, we played a lot of board games, certainly my family did, and I think everyone did as well, and we were buying a lot as well. Um, and, you know, I had some chats with Ronnie about uh, accessibility of, of of games and things like that. And I'd, I'd looked at, and I'd obviously you know, you're in lockdown, you're, you're thinking about all sorts of things. I was, <laughs> I was thinking about, you know, how did I start in the hobby and hmm. um, where did I get started and the kind of games I was playing at the time. Um, and we felt that, you know, it would be great if we could come up with um, something that hit that nostalgia vibe, hmm. you know, the, of, of cracking open a, a box of stuff and you should go, wow, I've never seen this sort of stuff before. Um, and something that you can that is then accessible for multiple people for you know for for all age groups yep. uh, all, all all types of gamers new gamers veteran gamers people playing board games or miniatures games for the first mm-hmm. time that kind of thing um, and could we combine all of that in one in in one product so um, you know we, we had to think about it had to think what what it could be is there something that we could um, one of our existing games that we could take and um, and use as a as a basis for that go back and, and re-explore mm. um, and we picked uh, we we picked Dungeon Saga uh, because it had been so popular and so um, um, so well received um, but it gave you it was that nostalgic vibe that you mm. wanted to go back to um, so we picked that as the as the as the game, um, and said, okay, what can we do to this to make it um, a, a new baseline for the game, a new uh, a new entry point, not just for the range, but for that wider range of, of gamers. Hmm. Um, and yeah, that's where it started. Fantastic. And do you want to just explain a little bit for those people that have played Dungeon Saga the the changes in terms of mechanics and that sort of thing, and then also just for for people completely new to to the game or, or to dungeon crawlers in general, what the game sort of entails in terms of mechanics. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's probably worth saying why we've called it Origins as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Origins is a is a kind of a double, maybe a triple meaning, really. So it's Origins in terms of the, uh, if you've played Dungeon Saga, you, you, you know the, the characters that are, that are in this, uh, the, the four main heroes. This is their origin story. So this is before they go and tackle the, the Necromancer Mortabris. Mm-hmm. This is um, them. It's almost like a training mission for them. So they're getting together for the first time. They're going to learn how to fight the undead. Um, um, so those that quests in that, that first quest book are, are them getting together for the first time. So it's, it's origin in, in that kind of mm-hmm. sense. So it's their origin story, if you like. Um, but also because of what, you know, as we said, you know, we want this to be a, a great experience for just not just veteran players, but for new gamers coming in. Yeah. You know, this is the first time they've played it, whether that's kids or, mm. or people who are just used to board games or whatever. So it's their origin story, too. This is where I started in this hobby. This is where I started, you know, how we remember yeah. starting all those years ago. You know, that that kind of origin mm. story, too. And it's a, a kind of a, a reset and, a, and a, a building block for us to go onwards and upwards in, ter- in terms of how we develop Dungeon Saga as a range mm. going forward. So it's or- origins in, in, in multiple ways. Trifecta um, of origins. Yeah, mm. exactly. It's really interesting. Um, so, you know, we looked at some of the other uh, games that we've got, um, some some learnings we've taken from, from, from other games. Um, you know, we looked at League of Infamy and how uh, that handled the, the tiles. Mm. Um, so those double-sided tiles that still give you a huge amount of variety in how you can construct a dungeon by blocking things off and um, and you know only access to certain bits, but you, you know and they don't have to be butted up to each other. Those bigger tiles mm. they can be offset and, and all over the place. So there's a huge variety there, um, and so it's, it's things like that which have do multiple things. There they're easier to set up. You know you're removing that complexity mm. and it's you're just getting on the on the game faster. So you, you know your kids aren't waiting around or whatever for you to set up. You yeah, know, you know, yeah. you just you're playing straight away, um, um, and your clean up and put away is easier, and you're not those, those, the the smaller tiles we had before. While while they're great for lots of tactical play, um, they can be a bit fiddly. You know, they're easy to lose. Mm, yeah. You know, they, you can get knocked, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, taking away some of those the, those things that uh, that make the game then more accessible mm. was 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 a, was a big thing. Um, and in terms of uh, mechanics as well, you know, we looked at 
what do people want to do that they can't or what what what's maybe some of the barriers to uh, some people engaging with the game um so we looked at looked at how we could make the some of those things more accessible so things like um uh movement your movement options and, and action options you're not fixed into moving and acting yep. you can do it either way around mm. um things like that so uh doors doors you can just open uh, now there may be some quests that do still require a key for you to go and find and stuff mm. like that but by default you can just move up to a door and open it and reveal mm. the next uh, the next section um uh, there's no range rulers in, in anymore so as long as you can see something you can you yeah. can you can you can hit it um and some sp- some spells also still say you know you need to be in your front arc or it needs to be in line of sight that, that kind yep. of thing um so that's that's still all there um and um the spell usage we've we've adjusted as well so there's no energy crystals or anything so that book bit of bookkeeping's gone away uh, mm. gone away as well so there's little bits and pieces like that that we've that we've uh, we've uh, taken away and adjusted but also put some stuff in to, to compensate and yeah um, and yeah sort of taken away from the heavy admin that dragged it down and, and... yeah and, and we looked at some of the things that people uh, um wanted out of dungeon saga like uh, more ways of searching and exploring yeah. That's now in there, so there's an exploration deck that will we'll go over. And obviously, you're shuffling it, so it changes every mm. every time. And obviously, expansions can add different cards yep. in and things like that. So you will get you will be able to search for treasure. You'll be able to search for secret doors. Um, you'll be turning over these exploration cards, um, and so you'll be getting uh, maybe rewarding monsters. You might find a treasure chest. You might be a trap. You know, yeah, looking all- at. Good and bad surprises. Yeah, so as well as opening your doors and revealing your map, you can also search for Mm -hmm. other stuff that you're not necessarily finding Mm -hmm. as well. Um, There's things in there as well. There's also merging threats. So actually you might turn over... um, Some some quests have got spawn points for monsters Mm -hmm. and enemies to come in anyway. You might get emerging ones where actually there wasn't one on the map, but then one suddenly appears. Um, Those those kind of things as well are great for um, if you've got loads of extra models those, those can be brought mm-hmm. into play and with the expansions um you can out where uh, it allows you to add those models back in as well so mm-hmm. they you might you know you might be playing the undead thing but actually you some of your goblin models might appear yeah. um, later mm-hmm. on that's that sort of thing which is uh, which i think is quite cool um and i think one of the the big things we, we we looked at once we'd once we'd worked out what it was we wanted to do um, and how to how to do it? The, ne- the next thing was then okay. Well, how do we make this uh, not just with an overall player, not mm. just with um, you know versus versus the players? Because um, lots of people do like to play this cooperatively. You know, we we're mm. talking about family games mm. and things like that, and a lot of people like to play solo as well. Um, so those uh, automated overlord rules, as we're, as, we're, as we're calling it, are uh, baked in from the from the start. Yep. So that will be in the rule book. Um, and the way that works is um, uh, you've got um, some behavior cards for the minions um, and then the, the different players, obviously if you're solo, you've taken all, all of them. You've got um, like a head henchman mm-hmm. role who, who does all the kind of the administrative bit for the, uh, for the overlord. Um, and then you've got one which rotates on a, on a round basis, which is the villain of the piece. So they get to make some of the decisions that if, if a decision needs to be made, they get to, they yep. get, they get to do that. Um, so out of the book, that's how it works. Now, obviously, um, that's if you're the head henchman you're, and you're playing in a group, uh, you need to not really, you know, you, you still need to control the game a bit and not reveal what the map map is because you can see that. Yep. Um, and with, with Solo, obviously, you can see it too. So one of the stretch goals that we're going to go for in the campaign is um, to build into our Mantic companion, uh, which is our digital offering on online list builder and everything else, the ability to uh, reveal that map as you play. So you mm-hmm. can have, the, have that companion as you're playing, um, and it will only show, okay, show this bit of the map. Yep. And you say, right, well, I've gone through that door, and it goes, right, now show this bit mm-hmm. of the map and, and the, the monsters and stuff. Yeah, here. really good for So that it will drive you through it yeah. so that you don't, so you, you can close that quest, but mm-hmm. put it to one side and you don't know what's coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah particularly good for, for solo players. You're not having the book there and almost sort of absolutely yeah. pretty so, well, determining what, to, yeah, what you're going to do. I know yeah. where to go, yeah. yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, so it takes, it gives you that suspense back yeah. um, mm-hmm. um, for, um, when you're playing and that, uh, should, I, should I go through mm-hmm. here yet or not, uh, et cetera. A um, couple of the other things we did, I know other people have mentioned uh, why have we switched to round bases. Well, you know, that's, I think that's a lot of modern games come with round bases mm-hmm. now. There's a number of reasons for that. Aesthetically, a lot of people prefer them. Um, I know some people do like their square bases, especially for fantasy games. 
Um, but we've shown that it worked in Star Saga and it doesn't affect facings or, yep. or anything like that. Um, and actually, from a from a functional and practical point of view, they are easier to cast hmm. because you can obviously it's, it's round base can be cast from any angle. Yep. So it doesn't matter if it is if the model is being cast on it. Not all of them are. Um, you can then it doesn't matter how you orient it. You, you can orient the model as you want in the mold, yep. and it will still close on it. Yep. You, know, you can't do that with a with a square base. No. They have to be separate pieces. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you're, dump, you're increasing the amount of tooling you're doing, the complexity in assembling it and everything else, um, and they might snap off, et cetera, et cetera. Et yeah, cetera. It, so there's a number of reasons we did it. It's one of the benefits of, of it being a, a one-piece model then, isn't it, is that it's straight out of the box and, and there's no... No yes, about absolutely. Build, and it, you know, you know, some some of them might still be two pieces, but it's probably the arm that's come off or something like yeah. that. But everything else can be can be shot in one mm -hmm. piece. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and of course, the uh, model scale. People mm -hmm. have been asking that question too. Um, so these uh, will be. You know, we didn't didn't go out purposefully and match the scale of Dungeon Saga mm -hmm. Origins. We went with our existing model scale. Um, so we've uh, based it off of Kings of War. Mm -hmm. um, so we've gone back to the T-poses. For, so, for example, the goblins, um, we went back to the T-poses, which are the kind of the, the unposed kind of static yep. static ones for the goblin plastics for Kings of War. Um, and then those were the basis for the goblins that were mm -hmm. sculpted for, for, for Dungeon yep. Tower Origins. So everything's based off the Kings of War, uh, mm -hmm. Kings of War scales. Yeah, so yeah. slightly so, bigger than the, the original Dungeon Saga. Uh, in some cases, yeah. yeah. Some, some, some might look uh, similar, but uh, yeah. they're certainly going to be bulkier and chunkier because that works better in, in, in PVC and in yep. the plastic. Yep. You, you're not going to get the bend or anything yep. like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and they're going to be more solid pieces and they'll be cast in a, in a higher grade of the PVC as well. So they'll be tougher anyway. Yeah. 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 The, the Hellboy board game is a great example of, of absolutely sort of, yeah, you can see that kind of high quality. quality. Yeah. That and, and the walking dead, you know, those, those yep. models, there's no bend in them. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So in terms of the overlord, what's new for him or her? Or her, yeah, yeah or, or anyone, yeah, anyone we like. So yeah, so if you're not playing uh, solo or co uh, cooperatively, there is a role of the of the Overlord, uh, very similar to the existing uh, Dungeon Saga. So their job is to uh, drive the game, mm -hmm. and drive the game forwards. Um, but um, what you don't want them is to feel uh, that they're distanced from the game, mm -hmm. and that obviously that the heroes are having all the fun. Yeah. Um, so, uh, one thing we've done is we've taken away the, uh, the overlord command deck. Now that was in, uh, that was a kind of a, also acted as a timer mechanic mm. in, in, in dungeon saga. Um, and that was kind of the default for the game. So everything was driven by, by yeah. time all, all, the t all the time. Um, now that is exciting, but it also limits your design space mm. uh, a bit because, you know, you, that, that is driving the game forwards and it might it limit, limits your ability. So we took that out. Now, that's not to say that you can't have some games later on that you could put a timer mechanic back in, but it's not the default anymore. Yep. Um, so that it, you just you just remove that that bit, and then everyone's a bit more relaxed in what they what what they can do, uh, etc. Now, um, in terms of the way that the Overlord can then interact, now they're they're not restricted anymore on um, what they can move, how many things they can mm. move. Um, so they get uh, a turn just like the players do where they can move all of their monsters yep. uh, if they want to and, and, and fight with them all. Um, um, and to replace the, the cards that we had before for interrupts, uh, they now get four uh, interrupt tokens mm -hmm. um, and they can use the, they can spend those uh, whenever they want. Um, once they're out of them, they're out of yep. them though, but they can get them back, which we'll talk to, uh, talk to you about in, uh, in, a, in a second. Um, there are some new rules for traps um now the, the rules that went out for traps in the samples that we sent out we have we have changed mm -hmm. to modify to work with the uh, the solo yep. um, and, the, and the cooperative play because uh, originally the idea was that the we said okay well you can have a number of possible trap locations mm -hmm. um and the overlord player decides on the map which ones they're going to use this time so yep. actually every time you played it was going to be different mm -hmm. but that doesn't work if you don't have an overlord yep. because the, the the heroes will just get well it's those ones and we'll never get we'll avoid them yeah <laughs> so we've, we've changed the way that that works uh, slightly so it's still so you actually put the traps out everywhere and they're all facing in a particular direction and so there's a load of trigger squares mm -hmm. so as soon as you go over it you flip it to see whether it is a trap or not so you'll never know each time you play okay. you've shuffled yeah. those counters so you mm -hmm. don't know whether they're traps or not and if it is a trap you then roll to see what type of trap it mm -hmm. is so there might be uh, 
dart traps, poison gas traps, that kind of yeah. thing. So, you, so you, um, and then that works as well whether you're playing uh, as the Overlord or solo yeah. or co-op. It all works. Uh, all works the same That's way. Clever, yeah. um, it allows us to do, uh, do more more mm-hmm. traps as well. Now there are also traps in the exploration deck. So you might trigger a booby trap in mm-hmm. there as well. So there are random ones anyway yeah. that can come up uh, at any time. So that adds to that mm-hmm. that uh, that replayability. Um, and as I said, we've got the automated uh, overlord as well with these behavior cards as well. So to try and replicate what the uh, obviously a, a human would be doing to yeah. drive the game mm-hmm. with with some artificial intelligence rules in there mm-hmm. for, for the for the guys themselves. Fantastic. And in terms of the heroes, what uh, what's new for those? Um, so. Um, as I said before, they've got a bit more. They've got a lot more freedom in the way that they uh, interact with the, the game and the environment. Yep. Um, in terms of uh, moving around, acting and moving in whichever order they want to, mm-hmm. uh, and exploring as well. Um, you know, all that all that's been added back in uh, um, to keep it to, to keep the interest level and to keep the to keep more options. Um, there's, there's, I know no, some people have noticed, obviously, on the cards that have gone out that there's no injury state anymore. Mm. So in the in Dungeon Saga, uh, as it as it we launched it before, the heroes had a different. Once they'd lost a certain number of wounds, they'd, they'd be injured, and then yep. that that would be a penalty. Now, what we've done this time is you haven't got that, but when you're crippled, you get a chance to revive. So everyone's got a revive token, mm. but if you spend it to come back. You flip it over, and it's actually then an interrupt, which you have to give back to the overlord. Mm-hmm. So you know there's a penalty for reviving in that the you're giving the overlord then an advantage yeah, back yeah. again. Um, so uh, so we've, we've taken away in one, in one regard, so there's less less to worry about there. For you know um, or or. You know, so your your wizards obviously tended, especially early on before they've kind of they've tooled up and mm. stuff, tended to get injured very fast. <laughs> um, they haven't got that worry anymore, mm. but there is the worry that they might, they're going to have to spend their, their token yeah. and give yeah. the overlord back a back an advantage. So mm-hmm. we, we, we've we've kind of we've we've moved the the goalpost slightly in that, mm. but to give more interest back to the uh, to the overlord player as well. Mm-hmm. So there's a, there is a penalty, there's a trade off for doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Uh, we've gone quite a light touch. So this this isn't uh, Dungeon Saga Oranges isn't designed to be a super crunchy Dungeon Saga in terms of character progression and in between quests uh, and all of that mm. stuff. Um, you know, we want the idea is that it gives people enough, um, and there's a light experience mm-hmm. thing, and you can buy stuff in between quests and all of that stuff, and you can keep your legendary gear. Um, but it's not it's not super super crunchy. You know, well this this is a uh, a basis for where we can go in the future yep. with mm-hmm. that kind of stuff mm-hmm. uh, for future. You know, if we, if we, you know, we'll, we'll uh, we will at some point uh, go uh, look at um, advanced versions of, of this game, but mm-hmm. this is the building block. This is where yep. we're going. Mm-hmm. So all those people asking, well, what, what do I do with Dungeon Saga? You can continue to play with Dungeon Saga. Will there be an advanced uh, Dungeon Saga? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But this is the building block. This is where you want to go first. Yep. Um, and then we'll av- yep. advance on top of that. Mm-hmm. But as I said, there is a light, there's a light XP thing. So you can gain um, experience for, uh, for completing quests mm-hmm. not getting crippled, et cetera, et cetera. You can then spend that on uh, what we're calling boons. Mm-hmm. So there's a, there's a, um, like a, a pile of, I think it's 12 or so different um, advantages that you can buy. Mm. But if you buy one, I can't buy it until you've used yep. it. But it's a one-off for the next uh, for the next adventure. So mm-hmm. it might be that I'm buying some rerolls or extra spell use or something like yeah. that, um, or that I can automatically ignore all damage that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And when once I've spent that, it, it's gone, but it goes back in the pool. So then someone else can buy it for the next yeah. next. Mm-hmm. So so it's it's a way of it's also a way of making sure that we uh, we can uh, easily balance the uh, the adventures, um, and that if you've got this expansion and you're playing it before this one, you know you you're you're not having to address the whole. Um, well, these guys have got tons of equipment now, and yeah. their, their stats are through the roof. Mm. It's like, how do I play this mission now? So it keeps it, it takes you to a level, and then you you're, you're balancing it out, mm. and then you're you're having to manage your equipment and those boons and stuff that you want rather than uh, doing tons of bookkeeping on, yep, on all yep. the other stuff, mm-hmm. which we know people love and we will get to, but mm-hmm. uh, but uh, not for this game. This is the, the accessible version. Mm-hmm. Get people into the idea of that kind of uh, character progression and then want more. Yep. Yep. Excellent. And what's staying the same for, for those that, uh, that love the original Dungeon Saga? What sort of things can they expect that are going to be 
well, still very much baked yeah, in. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got obviously we've got the uh, the same. We started off with the same heroes mm-hmm. and villains, so it felt felt familiar. Uh, obviously, you know the the same kind of feats. We've used a lot of the same artworks. Mm-hmm. It starts to feel f- uh, familiar in that regard as well. Um, so the heroic feats, you can uh, you actually choose. It's you get double sided cards, and you can mm-hmm. choose one or the other yeah. to go in. So actually, each time you play, you could choose a different feat. Yeah. Uh, which changes it. Uh, I know people were looking and worried a bit about because of around bases, have all the arcs gone? No, nope, they're all still there. And as I said, we because we uh, we saw that working and had no problems in Star Saga, there's no problems for us to go mm-hmm. to go to the the, the round bases. Um, so that's still there. So you still have your front arcs, your back arcs, uh, which are obviously your adjacent squares. So all that tactical placement is is all still mm-hmm. there. Obstacles still counting for cover. All, all, all of those those things are, are still there, mm-hmm. um, as a, as is the dice mechanic. Now we you know there's another question people have asked is why didn't we go for custom dice? Well, because we wanted to keep it familiar to Dungeon Saga. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've we've kept with the same dice mechanic that, that Dungeon Saga has. Um, and, and the other reason is uh, again for accessibility. People coming from board game environment, or people coming, you know, or, or kids playing their first games, that sort of thing. What are they used to? A lot of them used to just playing, you know, simple D six. That's yep, easy. Yep. That's an easy. That's one less thing to think about to mm-hmm. start playing the game. So mm-hmm. you can just get playing straight away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. Great. Thank you very much, Matt. That's brilliantly informative uh, look at the design process and some of the mechanics and some of the reasonings behind. Uh, why we've done what we've done. Um, Hopefully you'll all be really keen to jump on board. We now have a launch date. That's going to be the 30th of March at 3 p.m. That's UK time. So uh, make sure you follow along on the Kickstarter page. I'll drop a link in and uh, be there on Thursday. We'll see you there. See you later, guys. Mm -hmm.